American evangelical Christians are openly denouncing the harsh new conditions recently added to Uganda's anti-sodomy anti laws in a bill commonly known as Kill the Gays. In the wake of overwhelming public and political criticism of the Ugandan government, some American evangelicals are starting to feel the heat and seek to minimise their involvement with the African legislation. Among those who have been directly connected to the Ugandan law's design and implementation, either by rumour or money, are well-known evangelical pastors Rick Warren and Scott Lively. Lively appeared with two other Americans to speak at a 2009 conference on the law in Uganda where he condemned homosexuality in the name of God and spoke about conversion therapy. Ugandan media connects the development of the law to the conference, but Lively says he isn't responsible for the bill and calls criminalising homosexuality inappropriate, believing instead that gays have a behavioural disorder and need reparative therapy, not legal punishment. Pastor Warren blames the media for spreading rumours of his involvement and used social media to reiterate his opposition to the bill by recently re-releasing a video of himself from 2009 where he condemns the Ugandan anti-sodomy laws. The Ugandan government based their reasoning for enhancing the existing law on public health concerns and fear of AIDS, but global evangelical charity organisation World Vision, which has also opposed the bill since 2009, issued a statement saying that criminalising same-sex relations will actually interfere with HIV AIDS reduction efforts by making patients and providers too worried about legal consequences to seek or provide care. In Egypt, ongoing political tensions between Christians and Muslims are regularly set aside and all for the only thing that divides them, their faith in God. Every week in the country's Christian churches, Muslim, Muslims come seeking exorcism from priests where their imams are unable to help. Imams can and do perform exorcisms, however, the possessed Muslims of Egypt believe the demons called jinn are more frightened of Christian priests. Although the practice of Egyptian Muslims seeking exorcism from Christian priests is accepted, the blending of the two faiths into one service remains a somewhat dicey social proposition. One of the few priests allowed to perform exorcisms in Egypt, Father Saman Ibrahim, carved his first church from the rock of Mokatam, mountain near Cairo, after experiencing a vision 20 years ago. At first, his congregants were the residents of the slum near the mountain. Today, however, his church, the St. Saman Cathedral in Cairo, is one of the largest in Egypt and is visited by Christians from all over the country. Father Saman performs exorcisms at Thursday night, mass, live streaming the event over the church's social media sites. The Muslims in attendance, however, do their best to stay out of the range of cameras that pan over the congregants. Church members have told Time magazine that Muslim leaders know their followers seek out Christian priests for exorcisms, but filming them there would cause problems. The exorcisms themselves happen at the end of the regular service, which includes recitation of the Lord's Prayer, laying of hands by the priest, and anointing the gathered with holy water. Members of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect, Lev Tahor, have fled their homes in Ontario, Canada to avoid charges of child abuse. A judge in the province ordered the removal of 14 children from the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community after child protection investigators found evidence of neglect, child marriages and substandard education. Nine Left to Hall members were stopped by airport officials in Trinidad and Tobago as they tried to get to Guatemala. The officials refused to let them continue and offered them to re a return flight to Canada, which they refused. They're not currently charged with any crime in Trinidad and Tobago. Other members still in Canada offer their opinion that the government's actions against them are the result of racism and fear against the group, sometimes called the Jewish Taliban, even by other ultra-Orthodox Jewish sects. Left to horse spokesman Uriel Goldman declined to speak for the fugitive families, only offering his guess that they were frightened of losing their children and described them as good parents who are being unfairly targeted by Child Protective Services. Police in Chatham-Kent, Ontario, say... Twelve of the children that were to be remanded into the custody of the local children's services have left Canada, with the whereabouts of the remaining two being unknown. The order to remove the children was originally issued by a court in the province of Quebec, later upheld by an Ontario court. Eventually, nine members returned to Canada, where they were met by police as they came off the plane, and six children were taken away and placed in the care of the Children's Aid Society. Infidel viewers will be kept informed as this story develops.